This is Fantasy Football Picks and Bets on the Mayo Media Network, presented by Prize Picks. Reminder: use code MMN at PrizePicks.com. Get yourself a match deposit of up to one hundred dollars. Probably put it to pretty good use this weekend. Had a big week on Prize Picks. Still have the Steph Curry promo pending for when he gets more than half a point on Thursday night, and we'll cash another 200 bucks going forward with it. That promo is still available at prizepicks.com, by the way. So smash the like, sub to the channel, sub to Fantasy Football, picks and bets on any audio platform for myself and Tambo, Monday, Thursday, and Saturday for all the Island games and prize picks for the week. And let's jump into the Monday night game. Denver at, I was going to say San Diego, but that is not true. Wales Vagina is out. Los Angeles is in. So you have that Steph Curry promo that I talked about that is still going on. Uh, It does have a max uh, max play of $20 if you want to get in on it, but it is essentially a free square. So you can just play what you were normally going to play and then play Steph Curry as well just to try to capitalize on that. Starts in 33 hours time of this recording, and I believe that, that we're still pending on that one. Yeah. So if you followed along on the big five play, get 10x your money, 200 bucks, as long as Curry gets over, You'd be good to go on that front. But for Monday Night Football, you got to play one from each side of the game. So what I am looking for here is going to be K.J. Hamler less than 25.5 yards. That's essentially a catch for K.J. Hamler, one of his deep shot catches down the field. That's essentially what you're trying to fade here. If you go take a look at his game log, you'll see he has the one for 55 game. He has no more than two targets in any game. So they essentially just throw him bubble screens and bombs. So if you don't think that he gets behind the defense, then he's probably not going to crack 26 receiving yards in this game. You know, if he does, you're going to have to live with that. You're going to have a loser on your hands. I mean... I I played a lot of losers in my day, put it that way. But for this one, I think this one happens more often than not. We can jump over to runthesims.com, and it agrees with me. This is the most strong play, or the second strongest play. Less than two receptions is the strongest play for K.J. Hamler. Uh, Then, you know, if he goes one for 55, who cares? Uh, He still ends up going under that number. But I do prefer the receiving yards, because that does give you some leeway if they're trying to do some short passing, trying to evade the pass rush. Uh, We have it hitting around 81% of the time. So K.J. Hamler, less than 25 and a half receiving yards. On the other side of the ball, we're going to go to Austin Eckler. You can go... I mean, there's a lot of unders is what they want to try to give you here. You can get Josh Palmer overs with no Keenan Allen playing in this game, more than likely. I haven't heard the official word on that yet. Uh, we need someone from the Chargers to do this. So, you know, like Eckler under rushing attempts. That that all makes a lot of sense. I actually like his over in terms of receiving yards, though. It doesn't seem like Run the Sims necessarily agrees with me on that. So I guess I'll take one Run the Sims play. Receiving yards. Oh, the 36 and a half uh, enjoys the under. However, if I go over to my custom projections on Run the Sims, and you can always go and toy around with the inputs for the games, create your own projections, runthesims.com slash mayo to get yourself a discount on that. Uh, my medium projections like him to hit the over on receiving 41.1 yards in this spot. I mean, that that under on the rushing attempts, 18 or 11.1. Eight, so 12 rushing attempts for Austin Eckler is what you would normally like to see here. But I just feel like with the Denver passing game or pass defense being so good that they're going to have to rely a lot on check down. So like Everett Palmer, that makes a ton of sense. But Austin Eckler makes a ton of sense in this spot too. And you know, he doesn't need to get to as close to five receptions on the six targets to get to the 41 yards. It can be just you know one little check down, one miss, boom, he's off to the races. And all of a sudden you got your over. He's been over that number in five, uh, four of five games so far this season. So that's what I'm going with. K.J. Hamler, less than 25.5 receiving yards. Austin Eckler, more than 36.5 receiving yards. 125 pays 375. Let's get that in. And again, you can add the Steph Curry promo to that as well with a max wager of up to $20. I've already used mine, so I can't do that. But if you use code MMN at prizepicks.com or just hit the link down in the description, you will be fine from that front. So you'll get your bonus 100 if you deposit 100. So now you have 200 and then you get this free promo. Hopefully you can find something to go along with it. I right? Waiver wire and injuries for week six. Reminder to always sub to the Mayo Media Newsletter, where I'll have this updated all of the time. At running back this week, Cam Akers is going to request a trade. He did not play because of personal reasons. There was no real, like, 
injuries, weirdly enough, at running back. So guys are either coming back or nothing really changed. We'll see if guys, if Daryl Williams or James Conner end up healthy for Arizona for the Thursday night game. I very much doubt it. So you probably get another shot of Eno Benjamin or Keontae. <laughs> I, he didn't really do much. We'll take a look at the snaps here in a second. Uh, Jonathan Taylor and Naheem Hines both missed the game. Deion Jackson goes off with all that receiving. Damian Harris did not play. He did try to warm up before the game, however. Justice Hill didn't play. Gus Edwards didn't play. Gus Edwards is a very interesting name, and we'll get to that in a second in terms of the waiver wire pickups. And DeAndre Swift was on by. I would expect him back. That's the timeline for his shoulder injury. So Jamal Williams as a stud running back has probably come to an end. Still usable, obviously. But DeAndre Swift takes over that role once again. All of my waiver wire pickup rankings are up on DK Nation. Dot com or dknation.draftkings.com. I'll have the link down in the description. You can just click on it right now if you want to go follow along. I still have Mike Boone is the top pickup just because we don't know what's going on. If you play on Yahoo Leagues and Mike Boone is still available in your league, just drop someone that you didn't play on the weekend that you no longer want and go pick up Mike Boone because he's still available in over 50% of leagues right now. I have Gus Edwards at two, Rashad White at three, Kieran Williams at four, Donta Foreman at five, and then it's just kind of the rest. Like Deion Jackson I have at number eight. Yeah, he'd be most definitely a play for sure if we still see both of the other Indianapolis running backs out you have to think like one of them comes back this week then all of a sudden you don't get a ton of Deion Jackson if, if Jonathan Taylor continues to sit Deion Jackson is probably more valuable than Naheem Hines as we've seen they just don't love to run Naheem Hines into the ground although a lot of the passing work for Deion Jackson would vanish immediately should that happen because it would just return to Naheem Hines so be wary of that unless two of them are out he's probably not going to be a top 25 running back for any given week but the two I really wanted to focus on, like if you are speculating at running back and you need to pick someone up, you have three options here. You have Gus Edwards, who we don't know when he's coming back, if he's coming back, how this is going to work. But we've seen that the Ravens love to use Gus Edwards, regardless of the circumstance. We just saw them use a bunch of Kenyon Drake over the weekend against the Giants. J.K. Dobbins is playing, clearly not healthy. And maybe eventually he gets healthy. It's just we've never seen him in that full workhorse role. And it would lead me to believe that they're probably not going to do that again. Receive Sure, but Lamar Jackson so rarely throws to his running back, so that's not really a concern. It's like a goal line play or two here and there. It's not like you're going to see any running back on the Ravens ever end up with like eight targets in a game. Like, that doesn't happen. Maybe combined, they might get to that one day if they're losing by a ton and none of the receivers end up coming back. But Gus Edwards is their banger. They love to use him. You're probably not going to look at like a stud running back, but this is pure speculation. No one really owns Gus Edwards at this point, and maybe in two weeks' time, He's back coming off this knee surgery. So I would take the shot on Gus Edwards over Kieran Williams just because Kieran Williams is currently on injured reserve. And it doesn't seem like Cam Akers is coming back anytime soon uh, or if ever to the Los Angeles Rams. You have Daryl Henderson, who kind of sucks. And then you have Kieran Williams, who they drafted, who they want to use, hurt himself on special teams in week one. We haven't seen him since. He'll eventually be back. I think by week eight is when he's going to return to the roster. So I would stash him away. Uh, all of a sudden, you could just have the guy who's playing ahead of Daryl Henderson. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he sucks. And then you can just drop him. Like, whatever. And then Dante Foreman is the other one. There's just been all the speculation about Christian McCaffrey being traded from the Carolina Panthers. And if that's the case, Foreman would likely be the next guy up, not Chuba Hubbard. It, I don't know how good he would be. He'd probably be like a top 30 running back. But again, you're trying to fill out the back end of your bench, trying to take a big home run swing and to get a starting running back. These are the best ways to do it. And these guys, they're on people's radars, but not so much that they're not a available in your league at the same time if you have time to wait in the patience and the roster to do so i would highly recommend doing it you can see here from the snap shares on the weekend move that over a little bit so you can see everyone that in terms of the snap shares at running back uh, you see christian mccaffrey uh 86 percent donta foreman 23%. So it's nice to see Foreman popping up as that backup to McCaffrey. So if you just take away McCaffrey, yeah, it's not like Chuba Hubbard's not going to be involved. I would expect Foreman to be the lead and more importantly, the goal line back. Not that Carolina scores a bunch of touchdowns, but you know, that'd be nice at the same time. You see Stevenson played all of the snaps. Top five, Dalvin Cook, Devin Singletary, Eno Benjamin. I don't think you could have convinced me before the season started that any week during the season, even with bye weeks, that Devin Singletary and Eno Benjamin would end up 
two of the top three highest played running backs in terms of snap percentage in any week this season. It's kind of mind boggling that this is where this ended up going. See, Miles Sanders continues to thrive with no Boston Scott in the mix, trying to steal his workload. Gainwell's getting his gain well 30% every single week, but now we're at the Sanders above 60% again. And whenever Hertz isn't stealing his touchdowns, he's actually becoming quite a decent play. The split between Mostert and Edmonds is still quite pronounced 60 40 on that end. Uh, Algier still playing a ton, but he reeks like he's legit bad. Caleb Huntley looks so much better whenever he's in the game, likely because it's small doses. He's only playing 35% of the time, but Mariota is really the only one you want carrying the ball for the Falcons with any sort of consistency and any sort of productivity in that game. Brian Robinson almost played 50% of the snaps. It's funny because Antonio Gibson did like nothing, but still scored nine fantasy points. Brian Robinson ends up the touchdown. You still have McKissick as the main receiving back on this team. I just think this is a pure stay away situation to be perfectly honest with you like people want brian robinson to be good maybe he will be good but the commanders suck i guess they have green bay this week and you can run all over green bay maybe that's a spot for him i just don't see a situation where all of these other guys go away and it's brian robinson 75 percent of the snap share if that was the case then yeah all of a sudden we're talking uh, even if it is a crappy offense you still want running backs playing over 70 percent of the snaps but if it's going to be a crappy offense and fewer than 50 percent of the snaps that's a really tough sell when it comes to your fantasy lineup unless you just play in a 14 16 team league but 10 12 team league nah it's not gonna happen DJ Wiki Wiki Dallas played 33% of the snaps, but they even played some snaps with Dallas and Walker on the field at the same time. Not many, I think it was like two, but <clears throat> Kenneth Walker looked pretty good in that game, and they had no problems going to him over and over. So that's very encouraging to see. See that even in the Thursday night game, second week in a row, David Montgomery just continues to kill Khalil Herbert in the snap count. So Herbert is great if Montgomery is out. If Montgomery is in, Herbert is absolutely useless. That's no fun for all of us that went and picked up or stashed Khalil Herbert throughout the course of either the preseason or the early weeks of the season. You're seeing Michael Carter play around 50% of the snaps, but his actual touch per snaps are not very good. It's all the Brees Hall show with the Jets at the moment. So those are the running back pickups for the week. We can hop back over to the wide receiver injuries. Not a ton. Uh, again, it, it was a pretty safe week in terms of players being injured. So let's see. We have Keenan Allen is likely out for Monday Night Football. Hollywood Brown heard his play on that like last Arizona go. I don't know if he's going to be available for Thursday Night Football. We'll have to see. DeAndre Hopkins should be back for that game, though. His suspension is now over. Randall Cobb did not break his ankle, but he does have a high ankle sprain, it seems. So he's going to be out a few weeks. Jamal Agnew, the special teams and, you know, jet sweep and trick play guy for the Jags is going to be out. Hopefully they throw to Christian Kirk again. That would be nice. Kendrick Bourne exited the game, and so we got some more uh, Tyquan Thornton, who ended up scoring two touchdowns. And you had Thomas, Landry, and Olave all didn't play for the Saints. No word yet on whether or not they'll be back for Thursday Night Football. I'd say that Olave probably has the best chance to play, because it seemed like he came down to the wire to pass concussion protocol on Sunday. Couldn't do it. If he passes, he'll be back. If not, uh, I thought it'd be Callaway, then Traquan. Turns out it was Traquan, then Callaway. At least for last week. That could most definitely change. Kenny Galladay and Kadarius Tony did not play. Wendell Robinson obviously returned. Christian Watson not playing with that hamstring injury. Bateman, no word yet on when Bateman's going to be back. I'm like, they're really missing him in that offense. It's really bad right now. Uh, I don't know why I still have these like likely ins and likely outs. Dotson didn't play Thursday Night Football. I think that he'll be back. We'll see if Chark ends up playing. Um, Zay Jones did play. He wasn't even likely, and he was just straight up in, and he is on the waiver wire pickup power rankings at number 10. I have Jamison Williams at number one. I think he'll be back by week eight. Uh, the Lions just had their bye. They have a very easy schedule. We've seen how pass happy that they are. You're looking for a difference maker off the waiver wire, right? You're someone that you could theoretically put into your lineup, and they could be a top 20 wide receiver. I don't know if... Jamison Williams is going to be that guy. No idea what the the ramp up is going to be to his recovery, how much they're going to use him right away. So if he comes back in week eight, it's not going to be like, wow, Jamison Williams ranked number nine this week in the wide receiver rankings. No, 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 no. But by week 10, if he's as good as advertised and the Lions continue to throw and he does become the receiver one, and yeah, you get like a fringe top 10 guy on your hands. It's funny that everyone stashed DeAndre Hopkins for this long. And yeah, he's a proven commodity. He's also above 30 
and he's coming off like roids. So, I mean, maybe that's a good thing that you know, he really juiced himself up to get ready for this final stretch run because Arizona's going to need it at this point. But just the bulk of passing that happens on the Lions, you got to take your chance on Jamison Williams here. Use your bench, bench spot, stash him right now before, like, you got to do it now. I mean, he's still, it's not like he's completely unowned. I think he's owned in like 17% of leagues or something like that. Serious leagues. I'm, I mean, I've had him on my bench all season long, and I'm just waiting for the moment he comes back that maybe I can luck myself into a top 20 receiver, whereas the other guys that we see on the list aren't. Like, Alec Pierce isn't. He's like wide receiver. He's a low-end three in PPR leagues, a flex play. Uh, he ended up catching the touchdown this week. That's great and everything, but it seems like the Colts are going to pass a ton. I, I like him for PPR purposes. Isaiah McKenzie, number three. I feel like he might be in the doghouse for the Bills after all those drops against the Chiefs. He had previously had a concussion. People kind of dropped him on mass. I still think he's a good play when you can get access to the highest scoring offense. Uh, Shakir, if he ends up playing, I feel like Shakir more if McKenzie is out just because you know, he doesn't seem to drop the ball as much. That's great news. Wendale at number four. Corey Davis, clearly the apple of Zach Wilson's eye in the Big Apple, coming in at number five, Dotson, Thornton, Michael Gallup, uh, Josh Reynolds, Zay Jones. You could probably talk me into having Michael Gallup a little bit higher, to tell you the truth, with Dak coming back. Uh, but we'll see how he eases himself in to that situation. And Josh Reynolds, in the meantime, he just doesn't seem to be going anywhere in this Lions offense. So The tight end injuries for week number six. Uh, Adam Troutman. He was trying to like run motion across the Saints back or pre snap for the Saints, going from the left to the right, and like blew his calf out. He had to be carted off the field. Uh, just a non contact injury. So uh, that's good news for Jawan Johnson as he continues to run a ton of routes in the Saints offense. So maybe we can catch him on a prop or something. I don't want to pick up and play Jawan Johnson, but it does seem like he could be more involved in this offense. Cameron Brait was also carted off the field on the stretcher, gave the thumbs up. He can move all extremities. So that's great news. We get to the pickup rankings. We're going to see what's going to happen here. Frymouth, DNP, should be back next week. Logan Thomas, no word on whether or not he's going to play against the Packers. And Darren Waller, keep an eye on him because it's a hamstring injury. He's usually a multi-week injury. I know the Raiders were on bye week, but he still may not be ready as of yet at quarterback. Don't know if Carson Wentz is going to start. Skylar Thompson hurt his thumb. Teddy B played, but Tua should be back for Sunday Night Football as he's passed concussion protocol. We'll see if Kenny Pickett passes concussion protocol for that same game. If not, Mitch Trubisky is in. I think that Mac Jones is close. They keep winning with... Bailey Zappi, so we still might see some Zappi. Baker's out. P.J. Walker got hurt. I don't know what the hell they're doing. They had Jacob Eason in towards the end of that game, and he's so bad. Just looked like he wanted to throw a pick six the entire time. It's crazy stuff going out at quarterback in Carolina, killing everyone around them. So tight end pickup. I have Cade Otten at number one. We saw Cade with like eight targets in the game that Brate missed two weeks ago. He seems to be the guy taking over. He even had an end zone target against the Steelers, dropped it, should have caught it for a touchdown, but that was splitting time with Cameron Brait, with Brait seeing the larger end of that. Now with no Brait, presumably, for the foreseeable future, Otten actually becomes a pretty good play. Robert Tunyon coming off his 10 catches. He probably just missed his best game of the season, but they got no one else to throw to. If they're going to be losing and behind in games, they're going to be chucking. Juwan Johnson at number three, Evan Ingram. Juwan Johnson and Ingram are kind of the same sort of thing where they're running all these routes on, on passing attempts and not really doing a ton with them, but that's the opportunity that you want to see. Hunter Henry scored the big touchdown. Actually got another one, but it ran out of bounds first. Didn't think he'd do much with John Vision back. I mean, he didn't really do much, but had enough going on, and they did not ask him to block in that game ever, which is always nice to see from when you play your tight end. Uh, Bellinger, Dolditch, Irv Smith, eh, you're at the bottom of the barrel here. QB streams. Uh, Dalton, Thursday night against Arizona. Dalton's been really good <laughs> so far. It's it been kind of shocking, and Arizona's D sucks. Jared Goff at Dallas. Again, Lions love throwing the ball. Not outdoors is always where you want Goff, so even with a extremely good pass rush, I would guess that the Lions offensive line is back healthy again, so that's good news for Goff. Keep him upright, but he may throw the ball 50 times in that game, so good news. Marcus Mariota at Cincinnati. Brissett at Baltimore. Matt Ryan, who loves checking again. 37 pass attempts in the first half in week six. Good enough for for me at Tennessee defensive pickups streamers that you can have Saints at Arizona on Thursday night football New England at home against the Bears on Monday night football Denver at the Jets Jets at Denver that just seems like a game where the defensers are going to score fantasy points in them not great offenses Vegas at home against Houston I'd have them higher except uh Houston just loves running the ball 
and unless they're fumbling, yeah, you can you can pick off Davis Mills. That's not going to be a problem, but just how many passing attempts are you going to face? If you think it's got to be more, boost up Vegas. I think this is going to be a closer game than people think because Houston tends to play teams close for three quarters, and then they're horrible. So if you only get like 30 passing attempts from Davis Mills, it's not quite enough to put a pretty amateur defense over the top, even coming off of bye week. Miami on Sunday Night Football, either against Pickett or Trubisky, don't really care. They're at home, and they're playing the Steelers. The Steelers, although they beat the Bengals and the Bucks this season, they're not very good. Tennessee uh, at home against Indianapolis. Again, if you're going to face like 50 Matt Ryan attempts, very rarely is the opposing defense going to score minus one points like the Jacksonville Jaguars did this week. So I'd roll the dice again with the Titans if you're in a pinch in that circumstance. Once again, Mayo Media Network is presented by Prize Pick prizepicks.com code MMN to get yourself that match deposit of up to $100. If you want to run your own custom projections, run all the simulations, get your DraftKings showdown, anything like that, run the sims.com slash mayo will get you 10% off the weekly, the monthly, the yearly. You can always upgrade with that 10% off whenever you want. Makes it so easy to do your research and create your lives, be it for daily fantasy or for betting or for season long fantasy football as well. You can hit that link down in the description. You can find the waiver link down in the description and the newsletter link down in the description to smash the like and sub to the channel on the way out i'm pat mayo i'll see you next time